thank you for coming to my channel and i want to acknowledge that currently where i'm at i am inhabiting lands from the dakota and anishinaabeg people and i just wanted to take some time and acknowledge that and also remind you that you probably are on stolen land if you're anywhere in the americas you're on stolen land and definitely do that research about who were the original people on your land and really take time and acknowledge that and what has happened and where we are now and how much further we need to go. Let's get back into the video. I'm using my iPad to film this and I hope that it works. So I am taking notes and you know, just trying. So hello, welcome to my channel. This is Brie and I am just in a really good reading mood. Earlier today, I finished, um, I think, seven novels and comics, so that was dope. In this vlog, you will be seeing me talk about The Narrows by Anne Petrie. If you are not up on my, not up on, but if you don't know that I do a Black classic read-along or discussion, I do it every month, usually the last day of the month unless life happens. And for November, life happened. And I canceled it and was going to reschedule it, but I decided that I don't have time. Like life is, is still happening. So I decided to do a vlog instead. So I'm reading The Narrow by Ann Petrie and I'm a couple hours into it. And the reason why I'm a couple hours in while starting the vlog and not pretty fresh into the book is because I kept going back and forth if I would make this a vlog or a standalone video review. And as always, Ann Petrie writes beautifully. The atmosphere is giving and the way in which she developed characters is pretty awesome. I don't know any other way to say it. And I just finished a scene where this black man just had enough. He just really had enough and this white woman treated him like a, a chauffeur, which he was not at that time. And he just took her car and went on a joy ride with her in it. And understandably, I can understand why she would be afraid being a woman, right? Being like, man, this guy is like using my car, take me on this ride and I'm afraid for my life. However, the author, Anne Petrie, um, she set it up for that, the black man to think to himself, like, I'm just tired and I know this black, I know this white woman is thinking, hey, I know this black man is going to sexually assault me because that's all black men are good for is sexually assaulting women and just can't fight their urge of sexual assault. And of course they're saying it to be, of course that's not true. However, at that time, I can totally get how that black man would say that and think that. And I also want to also acknowledge that I can understand as a woman, why the other woman would be afraid that some guy done took her on a joy ride and her car because also while he was taking her on this joy ride he was driving at a very high speed and in like a sketchy place where it was like no one on the road but him and this white woman in the back of the car however i was thinking at the same time when he was talking about like assumptions that white people can make of black men i was thinking like dude this is not a smart decision for you because black men has died of less so you know, it's one of those situations where you understand all sides, you understand all sides, but it doesn't make it easily digestible just because you understand all sides. I'm also seeing some hints of interpartner violence, rather explicitly or not. And I wanted to say that as a content warning. And it goes in and out. I won't say right now, I've only listened to over four hours of the audiobook. 
So I can't tell you if there's going to be more into partner violence, but, but so far that is what I saw a little bit of it. I am very suspicious of this Bill character and the mayor character because they just seem like very powerful men who really engage in, um, what is it? Misogyny noir, I think is what it's called. Definitely correct me if I didn't pronounce that right. So that is what I listened to currently and I those are just some of my thoughts and I'm gonna sit here and play Candy Crush as I always do and then I'll try to figure out some b-roll to incorporate in but this is where I am and I'm also going to be studying for an exam so I'm going to take some time and study for that exam as well. And I think it's, well, I see the time. It's 12, 19, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can stay up for a couple hours. You know, tonight is just one of those nights where, yes, I wanna sleep, and yes, you should always value your sleep, but I just feel like I haven't been giving myself enough me time. So I'm going to stay up to give myself enough me time so I don't feel so rushed throughout the week. Like there's just so many like little things that I wanna do. I wanna make my bed, I want to, there's just so many little things that I want to do and I'd rather just do them tonight as I am listening to this book and studying for the test, if that makes sense. I just want to collect my thoughts, just spend some time with me and I just need more awake time <laughs> than sleep time.
right so there's a thing about reading black classics that i just have to prepare myself for the effery you fill in the blanks what that is and like i said i'm filming from my ipad so sorry if the quality isn't that great previously i discussed that the white woman she's either white or high yellow and high yellow is how it's being described in this book now we say biracial multiracial or light-skinned black person right and my back y'all my back is killing me okay i gotta get it together so she comes back to the bar or the spot where he first met her and you know she assumed that he was a sure for whatever blase blase and she was like oh i was looking for you because i wanted to talk to you and i just feel like she's one of those people who's just out here digging a hole just keep digging it, it kind of reminds me of that one meme or whatever that's going around where it's like i'm tired grandpa well you keep digging because she was just digging a hole for herself so she comes up to the black man and she's like hey you know i was looking for you because you know you just made me feel safe and all the other black people just had danger and horror in their eyes and, you know, you had a different face as well, but I felt safe with you. And I just kept telling myself, but he's a good one. He's a good one. I feel safe with this Negro. I feel, and I'm just like, and even the guy, like you hear, you know, his inner dialogue, which I really love. Shout out to you, Ann Petri. You hear his inner dialogue of being like, oh, does she really know what she just said to me? And it's just like, how dumb can you be? But also, privilege. As a white woman, you think that what you're saying is a compliment. It's kind of like when people be like, oh my God, Brie, you can speak so well. Compared to what? Some things just, you just got to make it make sense because I'm over here ready to fight her. You know, I'm ready to give her the one. And I'm just sitting here pissed listening to this lady just dig hole after hole after hole and he's trying to tell her like lady no i'm not trying to listen to anything you're trying to tell me right now and he also you know need to work on himself too because he out here waiting for the lady he goes oh let me just wait for the lady i know it's weird and i shouldn't think that she wouldn't come but some part of me is waiting for her to return. You waiting for this white woman to return? They out here lynching folks. Even in the book. The book starts off with this character talking about this tree called the Hang Man Maple. You understand? And then she goes through the history and be like, well, maybe it was a black person who said it's the Hang, Ma it's the hang Man Maple because it's one of the biggest trees in this area and it looks like a perfect place to hang a negro so since all of this is happening my dude why are you trying to trying to see what sally is doing head out from sally head out from sally because sally gonna get you caught up and look you gonna be on a milk cart and whatever equivalent of that time you know i just i just need to see when this was Hold on, the narrows, because I can't remember when when it was published. So let me let me get let me get you let me get you, man. And it had to be Link. I just read the name of the character. It's Link, and I'm just like the beginning told you. You know, there's these two twins, and they had a rough life. And Link is the one who's out here wilding. Man, 1953, y'all. 1953, and Link out here in these streets just out here in these streets and i'm thinking the woman that i'm talking about is camila or camille or camillo because y'all know i don't remember names but this ain't a good look in 1953 and i know it's fiction but i'm constantly feeling like i'm always yelling at characters like don't do it don't walk in the door he's gonna kill you and i just feel like our boy link is just setting him set himself up you know there's no way there's no way that i oh and the thing is i can't even sit here and try to speculate because i don't know how i would act and exist as a black person specifically as a black man in that time but i'm just like you you fire right here right here and i'm no no i just think a lot about like if i lived in that town because like now i'm friends with white folks i got i love i got a lot of white folks in my life i love and cherish 
but I'm wondering if I would really be ha ha kiki with the white brethren in the way that I do now in 1953. It's probably going to be a hell no for me because we already know. We already, we already know. We know history. We know facts. Like the fact that my grandmother's mother was an ex-slave. She was an enslaved person. That right there is... It's close. So I just feel like we've come a long way, but we also haven't in 1953. It's not that far away, okay? So I don't know, I'm over here just, I'm just stressing out about this black man because I'm like, don't do it, don't do it. And I'm gonna be honest, I feel very protective over black men and their safety. I do, I do. So I'm just over here like, you know, this is not a safe choice at this time. You know what I mean? It's, it's not giving me safety. Cause that giving me comfort. It it reminds me of that time I was walking around my sister house. Um, she lives in Texas, and I was walking her dog. And y'all know I don't like dogs, but that's not what this is about. But I'm walking her dog, and this lady is like, uh, getting rowdy with this black man, and clearly stereotyping, and just like she's losing her mind. And I just automatically got into it and helped defuse the situation because I was afraid for this black man's life. That was actually really dangerous of me because some could have happened, but I, I literally was not even thinking. I was already acting. So I just feel like black men, black women, black people, I'm very protective of my folks. And I'm just reading this, getting stressed out. So that is, um, that's what I got for y'all. I'm gonna continue trying to make this bed because it needs to be made. It needs to be made. The sheets are clean. I need to clean the clothes off the bed. Off the bed, y'all. So, um, yeah.
get stuff done I'm just in the mix of trying to get things done and i'm just learning more about link and camillo and them as individuals and the things that they went through to be themselves also the way grief is being described in this book is so interesting because one of the characters passed away and another character is a bit younger when this happens and he is just like upset that the spouse of the person who passed away is not giving him attention and they like become reclusive in the way and i'm just like how do you not know that person is grieving but then i'm also like the person is eight so the way that grief is talked about is very interesting in this book also there is a teacher named dwight who told the class that they will just dress up in blackface because link doesn't know how to dance and because he doesn't have a father who would have taught him how to dance he should have have known how to dance because he's black the fuckery the nonsense continues every every damn day talking like this from this direction because i just don't want y'all to see what's happening with my nose i'm just like this nose ring is really giving me the blues and i this is my fourth nose ring piercing and i really like them and i'm i am too determined and i will not take it out so i'm just gonna figure it out and i just have like really sensitive skin but um i digress so a lot of stuff has happened um i thought i was gonna stay up last night and you know read this book but that did not happen hold on let me get my notes so the first thing i noticed was like this cat and mouse kind of play that link and camille was doing it's like you know they want to be together but they're thinking about how the world may view them you know link being black camilo being white and then i think camilo husband is starting to come on or something i don't know so i think i think he's not dumb and i think he sees things so i think that this was happening also um i wanted to take some time to talk about when link was younger and his teacher was just being very racist towards him and he was just exhausted and he was exhausted and he was eight years old, by the way. But he was exhausted because his Aunt Abby, who adopted him, kept telling him, like, you know, in the race, you have to do this. In the race, you have to do this, this, that, and the third. And he just felt that when she was telling him that, that she was putting all the onus on him. So when she talked about the race, most Black people know this, but I will explain it to people who are non-Black and may not understand so the auntie was like look we finally got an opportunity to read the white man has allowed us to read we need to read better than them we need to look better than them we need to make sure that our teeth is clean our clothes is nice we need to make sure that we have good manners 
We need to make sure that we're studious, that we are taking our studies seriously because we don't need to give the white men any more ammunition to call us a Negro, which I think was really something to set many of us up because I feel like no matter what we do, we're still going to be a Negro. So it doesn't matter how studious you look, you are still going to be a Negro. Specifically at this time, that was true. And I would even argue that remains to be true to this day. So that was something that I was reading and I was just like, wow, I remember my mom telling me like, don't do this, don't do that, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. You know, all these things to make sure that I am more palatable to the white man. Now I'm in a part of the book where there's a new character um, and her name is Mamie and this white man has gotten a liking to her and he finds her comforting and he loves the way she smells, blah, blah, blah. But he refused to tell her that it's because she's a big black woman and she falls for that like comforting maid trope kind of thing. But in some ways that is not how he treat her. But I can't help to visualize that because one, that's something he said. And then two, it's just so loaded, right? This would be 18 videos if we went there. So those are just some things I'm thinking about. And now they're exploring the relationship between Mammy and this white man. So, you know, there's a lot of interracial relationships happening in this book. And I fear a lot for the black folks because of the time in which this is. Like this was the early 50s, but we're going to see. We're going to see what's happening. But I'm over here, you know, clutching my imaginary pearls.
not me doing everything I can do to not show y'all this nose piercing. And if you get a little glint, look, it's sea salt on my nose. Just mind your business. Um, I want to say that I made a mistake. I thought Mammy's husband was a white man. That's fake news. He he's black he's just really in love with this woman and this woman is truly living her best i just feel like i'm not gonna say she don't care for him but it's clear that her husband loves her more than she does and i do think there are some moments where i feel like she's taking advantage of him and taking advantage of his kindness because he seems really kind and i don't think any partner should do that you know just because you got a kind partner you're just gonna be rude or inconsiderate like it's like little jabs of inconsideration i would find with mammy so i want to take it back he is not a white man he is very much giving black man factually black man y'all i am tired and i don't get why i got enough sleep such as like Y'all gonna see me in this sweater a lot because I put it on a lot when I feel cold. Okay, I am getting into this book and I'm getting pretty close to the end. And I know this is a spoiler vlog, but I don't want to say too much about Bill Hodge. I think everybody, we need to talk about Bill Hodge. And if you have read this book and you remember this character, let's talk about him in the comment sections below. Also, Link, you know... He really has had a life, a life of a privilege and a life of hardship. So watching him navigate those things is disheartening. Also watching him engage in physical violence is disheartening as well. But I wanna take some time to talk about the brilliance of Anne Petrie writing. So when you're reading her books, what I like the most about it is how she used repetition in her writing style. So when I looked on Google, I found that there are over seven or over nine different ways to use repetition in literature in your novels in your poetry and whatever right so then i figured out that the type of repetition that ann petrie uses called dioscope it's like she will set up a scene and be like you know uh man i i don't know how to describe it but when you look it up dioscope you will get what I'm saying. And if you're reading this book, you'll get it too. I'm trying to really think hard about an example. There's also another type of repetition she does and I wasn't able to find it, but it's like you will read it and then she would repeat phrases that another character said in the past to connect you with the moment. So let's say someone experienced hardship or they're triggered she will repeat the words that enacted that trigger from previous chapters. And I'm like, wow, brilliant. And going back to Dioscope, let me see if I can set it up. She'll be like, he went here to get some food. The food was good, but he went there to get the food or something like that. But the way that she would use repetition to get the reader to further understand that we are in that specific moment and the significant relevance of being in that moment. Because oftentimes when she used that style of repetition, dioscope, it reminds you to stay in that moment and also reminds you of details that you may have forgotten. So for example, when one of the characters dies, he goes, the house, the house, the house. And throughout the book, after he dies, you are reminded of what it felt like for one of the main characters abby when this character died it just beautifully connects you to scene to scene to scene i don't really know how to describe it but i'm here for it i loved it in her novel the streets and she's doing it again here in the narrows and i just really feel like we are not giving auntie ann petrie grandma and Petri enough flowers. I know she's no longer here with us, but I just wanted to talk about that specific writing style. Y'all, I'm trying to <laughs> get all the food that's in my mouth. Hopefully there's none, no crumbs. Um, I'll make this quick. I'm very sleepy. This is Monday. For the life of me, my anxiety got the best of me and I couldn't sleep till 4 a.m. And I've been up since seven. So I have drank one cup of coffee I don't like drinking coffee, but sometimes I really ain't got no choice. So I drink one cup of coffee with the hopes that that can give me some energy. 
today, but I don't know. I put on this dress. Ooh, you can see that. It's pretty uh, long, but it's like a slit on the thigh. I didn't realize so I had to throw on some tights. Um, yeah, I just, I don't even know. Um, my car is not working. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, get a ride to work from my colleagues, um, which is not, that is not a bad thing at all. I'm trying to find which cup to use so I can make another cup of coffee. Man, I'm dragging. I'm dragging. So I'm gonna use this. My roommate was kind enough to make that for me. Um, just try to sit this somewhere where I can talk to y'all. Um, yeah. So that's just where we're at. Just I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that for sure. Uh, I'm gonna need that. And also today, y'all. You know, my, what is it called? My, I'm literally having a brain fart. Like I can't, it's like, I can't do nothing. Let me position this better. Um, my deodorant decided that it was just not going to participate with the rest of the world. Um, which is like very, it's very upsetting. Me and my homegirls. Um, I'm using my roommate's creamer. I hope, I hope she don't mind, um, stuff, but let's be real. Am I always using her stuff? Yes. Um, this is like one of my favorite mugs to drink coffee in because it's like starry and stuff. So that's good. If y'all were like, oh, do you put on makeup for work? No. I go like this because makeup is too much. But look what happened to my deodorant. That's messed up. It won't close. So now all the deodorant is on the top. <sighs> this day is trying to get the best of me, but I won't let it happen. I'm telling you right now that I won't let it happen. But anyway, um, I literally have one minute to get outside because... I only have one minute, so see y'all later. I hope you can see my head, but I am so tired. It is 5.15 on whatever day it is. I'm barely moving along. I have stuff to do for my family. I have stuff to do for myself. I have a lot of like important stuff that's coming up very fast, so I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with that. So I'm trying to eat. Um, I made these dumplings. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I made them a while ago. So I am just letting them cook um, as I boil them. I don't know if you can see my face or not. Probably not. But um, this is what I wanted to show you. So these are one of my various reusable bags. And usually every couple months, I will go and buy those dumpling wrappings, make a filling, make the dumplings, freeze them separately so that they all ain't like bunched up. You see, these are all singled out. And then I'll use it for food. So I am hooking up those dumplings. I already had some of them. They were really good. This is probably the best batch I've made so far. And then um, I make like this you can see that so what this is is fish oil soy sauce we got fish oil soy sauce oh fish sauce sorry soy sauce and then chili garlic sauce and then some ginger i'm just waiting on that to cook a little bit more so i can hook it up so as we continue to go down the rabbit hole that is this book and not a rabbit hole in a bad way i just have a lot of thoughts about the ending and i won't give it it is very sad and all this book does is further inform me that white women 
can be very dangerous when they are calling out for help, when they are trying to be spiteful to black men in that specific way. Like the cry of a white woman would get a black man killed. Rather the white woman is justified in the tears or not and when i say that it's like if she's trying to be spiteful or not it still can lead to the death of a black man and this book is a perfect example of that i also have a hard time have a very very hard time with characters of any race or any gender saying that they were sexually assaulted just because they're mad at their partner for not wanting them but there was no sexual assault i think it just hinders the voice of the hundreds of thousands of people around the world who has been sexually assaulted it fuels into that narrative that are you really telling the truth so I think people need to be really, really mindful of the accusations that they put on folks. And that is what happened in this book. And it's one of those things that really upsets me um, to my core. Just really, it's just rough. It's just really rough. You know, that's just, that's just how I feel about that. I really wish there were more that I can say about this book. It's one of those books where I just need time to digest it. I might talk about it in a in a wrap up or you know another type video in the future but right now i'm just like still upset and steaming like these dumplings about the ending of the book i just felt like there were so many people who i put at fault in this book so many people i put at fault for the outcome of this book again and petri putting me in my feels and also writing a very controversial and riveting piece of work i recommend that you read it so that is my TED talk as I talk about, or as I talked about Anne Petri De Narrows. I hope you liked this vlog and see you soon.